Welcome to Brickly Middle East. This is CFA video series. Today we will discuss three major topics of the financial statement analysis, which include income statement, balance sheet, cash flows, and in the last we will discuss the interpretation of the financial statement, but this is not the part of today's lecture. This will be a separate lecture will be given for it. Starting our discussion, first of all, we will see the components of the income statement, what in fact uh, in income statement includes, what are the components, what different styles of income statement are used for presenting the information. We will see how the revenue is recognized according to the IF, IFRS and the gaps where there are different treatments. But broadly, we, we have to recognize the revenue when we realize that the economic benefit will inflow and uh, same way we have to apply the matching the concept. It itself is, is a term which we used uh, to show the decrease in the value of the fixed asset. Uh, depreciation can be calculated from different ways, certain methods as accounting knowledge you should know the state line method, reducing balance method, some of digit methods is there. But in CFA level 1 we are going to focus on the straight line and the double uh, straight line. Uh, but generally this is cost minus uh, residual value or the scrap value at the end of the period of uh, the useful life divided by number of years and we will get the yearly depreciation out of it. Then we have to see uh, the uh, other part of the income statement because income statement has broadly starts from uh, income from your activities, operational activities, then you have cost of sales and it will give you a gross profit and uh, uh, then you have, a, you have certain kind of expenses which is classified as administrative, selling and administrative and uh, marketing and distribution, then we have interest, then we have tax and earning before tax, earning after tax, earning before interest, earning after interest. This is uh, certain formats we use in, in the income statement. Then according to the IFRS, we have to show the income statement as continued operation and separate portion for the discontinued operations. This is uh, why we do it. it. It helps the investor the decision who uh, and the stakeholder who is going to rely on the financial statements. If your, uh, if your income statement is shown in a way continued, discontinued, so surely he can see the discontinued operations and additional disclosure will explain that uh, why it happens and what is the reason for disclosure and how it is going to affect the normal uh, continued operation and you can base your analysis on the figures that is coming from the continued operations. Then we have to, to keep in account the unusual transactions which uh, comes in the uh, income or in the expenses to see the trend. For example, uh, last year your sale was $30 million. Now this year your sale is $55 million and the next year your sale will be 40 million dollars and now this plus minus is how, how it shows the trend we have to see if there is something abnormal happen and it makes your uh, sales more than the normal sales so what is the reason for that is there any project they get it which is apart from the regular sales so out of this concept you have to see the pattern of the income pattern of the expenses so you can make a generalized average mean for understanding the income or expense pattern of the company so you can analyze the uh, financials in a better way. You can say a very important uh, method to see the worth of your business that is earning per share. Earning per share is we calculate as a basic uh, tool to see that how much uh, the each shareholder is going to earn uh, 
because having investment in the company. Now, the, there are two kind of EPS, earning per shares. It is one is uh, the simple basic earning per share, and the other is diluted earning per share. Basic earning per share, as per definition, is it includes everything which which is the part of the shareholder equity. But in diluted, uh, it's a discussion that preference stock, which is uh, because stock has certain types, ordinary stock and preference stock. Ordinary stock, there is no fixed dividend. If the company is having profit, so they will go for the dividends. Otherwise, company don't have any liability in terms that they have to give the dividend. But in terms of fixed uh, dividend or preference dividend, uh, preference stock, uh, these are the stocks which when we issue, we ensure our, uh, the person who is going to buy that this is uh, the interest rate or the dividend rate that we are going to pay them as the fixed rate. So it's sort of liability for the company which we classify as equity. So based on this dilemma, some people don't want to include preference stock in the calculation of per earning per share. That's why we exclude the preference stock uh, based on the uh, concept that I just uh, told you and uh, they, it becomes more diluted. So there are two calculations here, one is earning per share, one is diluted earning per statement of financial position which is balance sheet which is the composition of three uh, thing, major thing, one is assets, one is liability, and the third is uh, the equity itself. In a balance sheet we have current assets, we have non-current assets. In a balance sheet we have liabilities, current and non-current. And equity portion is going to show the earning for the year. Then if we have some broad forward uh, retain earnings, then we have the capital introduced and we have paid, in cap pay, paid up capital. These are certain ingredients of a balance sheet. Now based on the balance sheet we should also know that the depreciation will be the part of the balance sheet because uh, the depreciation is uh, going to reduce the value of the asset and uh, make a realistic pic picture, make it more uh, convenient for the uh, viewer to, to uh, understand the true value of the asset because assets are generally recorded at cost and cost varies over the years. So if there is no concept of depreciation, surely your stock will show appreciated. We should know how in the financial the depreciation is calculated and uh, being an analyst you should know that uh, which region you are going to analyze. For example, UK the depreciation style will be different from US. So first of all as an analyst you should develop what major things you have to pick and adjust before you start your analysis. Same way amortization is also an important consideration. This is for those things which are patent, uh, which we bought the copyrights and patent products. It's similar to depreciation but surely there is a consideration for intangible assets. For intangible, in, when the intangible asset lose its value then we say that we have to amortize and we have to see the other off uh, balance sheet disclosures uh, what other things we have to disclose in the balance sheet uh, or sometimes we have to go for off uh, balance sheet financing also and what are the considerations for uh, event after balance sheet or how it affects being an analyst we should know all this information <coughs> Then in cash flow we are going to discuss uh, the certain types of method to prepare a cash flow that is direct method and indirect method.